It really relieves a lot of stress too. You don't feel like all the pressure. I'd just like to interject something here because I know mm -hmm. uh, Geo's from Dumaguete and a lot of the feedback and the things you're getting are from Dumaguete. Mm -hmm. As I landed here, I mean, you land in the, uh, and you go to your hotel, you go to uh, like ground zero or, or something like that in the morning, you will have friends by noon. Yeah, you will, yeah. Just will. And there's people yeah. are so friendly. It's, I've never landed yeah. somewhere where I knew nobody and by I'm being here less than 24 hours, mm -hmm. I had made a small circle of, of positive acquaintances. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the majority, you know, I every once in a while you'll get the bad expat stories, but the majority are people who are just like us. They just want to come here and enjoy life, stress-free, have a nice Filipino girlfriend, and, the other, you know. The other thing about that is, and like Gio, um, there's a bunch of guys that came into Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. And they were all married. They yeah. had their families. I mean, we're talking a lot of people. It's not everybody does come in here to meet uh, submissive women. That's not it. Right. I mean, people come here and they th mm -hmm. these, these people are real. And as far as being submissive, yeah. I don't see people, women here being submissive any different than it was in the 60s and 50s when no, the I men kind of worked and the women took care of the home. You know, the women, mm -hmm. are, the women are not submissive in the, in the in the sexual sense. It's not. It's not. No, no. Not the submissive that people are talking. about. They are not concubines. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, the only thing I I I only have a few things that I ever get any stress about, and that's like the way things are organized and very slow moving, and things don't make sense. But I've gotten over that by just like I only do like one big thing a day like if I have to go do this this task I'll do one thing I don't try to run and do a bunch of errands if in one day. If you're coming to the Philippines the first thing you really need to bring is your patience. Yes for and, sure. And um, people say oh well what what do you do for a living? I, well what I do now for a living is mm -hmm. I walk to the highway quarter mile and I get it on a jeepney as opposed to a trike which costs five times as much. Right. I shop at the public market where I get all fresh foods and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I carry my bag home. And uh, I save from not going all the way to the market, the big market. Mm -hmm. So there's just little things that you can do. I cook my own food because I like it that way. I'm not a big fan of Filipino food. I mean, you've got uh, yeah. lupias. Yeah. Like, I like that. And I like street food. But in, in general, the, I cook my own food. And as That's... a result, I eat very well. Obviously, you can tell I'm 11 months pregnant. And <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah. You know, that's just what I do. My time is I, I take my patience and I save myself money. And that's another way of getting through. And, you know. That's basically what we do. We've really, it's just a comfort thing too. You know, we like to cook cook a meal and watch a program on TV or something while we're eating. And, you know, it just, uh, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to do that. So it seems like you really like Baguio a lot. Now, what, how, do you ever think about just moving to Baguio or? Well, I, I've been staying there about a one week a month. Mm -hmm. I made some friends there extremely quickly, you know, and they won't take money for rent. And, uh -huh. you know, I will do stuff for them. I'll buy bottles of wine or certain kinds of cheese or things that they normally don't buy because it's not in their budget. So mm -hmm. it kind of works out. Um, and I went there really to start doing videos for my channel. And I did a Google search, and there's 26 different things that show up as tourist mm -hmm. attractions. I figured, okay, well, I'll go cover those in three days, and I'll be done. When I got there, I mean, the uh, what mm -hmm. I saw in these tourist destinations was amazing. Hmm. And it wasn't just uh, a 15-minute vi visit. It was like an hour. And these places are absolutely stunningly beautiful. And so I kept going back and going back, and that's how I've ended up being there so long. And then another yeah. one's coming up, so I go do Baguio Day or these different things. And... Uh, I love it there. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of San Francisco 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And the weather is average 67 degrees all year round. Mm -hmm. I live up in Quezon Hill, which is actually, I don't know, six or seven kilometers from downtown where the market is. I hop on a jeepney, yeah. it's 12 paces. I go all the way to the market. I buy what I want. I go get back on the jeepney and it's 12 paces home. Huh. And uh, there's always something to do. When I visited, I stayed in the hotels down on Sessions. Yeah. And Sessions is the only name you need to remember when you're looking for a hotel. Because you yeah. walk out your door on a Sunday and there's a big carnival on the street. Every wow. Sunday. It's all families and uh, like an open air. There's food. Huh. There's all kinds of things. There's places where the kids draw with chalk on the ground. There's the uh, 
uh, you know, all kinds of things child oriented. There's wood carving yeah. stores. There's fruit. There's all kinds of things going on there. Or I like I like to get up. I go to the public market. I'll find some fruit that I like because mm -hmm. uh, it's all fresh. And then uh, I'll get some coffee and I'll go down to Burnham Park and I'll walk around. It's just a nice, beautiful walk. And the boats floating around and the beautiful, uh, you know, there's the grounds are kept everywhere. It's beautiful. Hmm. And then I'll go back and then maybe I'll go to SM uh, Baguio. I'll do some shopping. Mm -hmm. Any, you want to go to botanical gardens, you want to go any of these kind of things. You just hop into a taxi, they pull over. It's going to cost you 60 or 70 pesos, less than $2, you know, to get to most tourist attractions in mm -hmm. Baguio. Hmm. And there's so many of them. So you see yourself, you're content with your arrangement. You know, you live a week or two weeks where you're at and then just go to Baguio and then travel the rest I, of the time. I'm, I'm living the, my best life. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, like I came here to do Maggetti, literally, I uh -huh. came here to do Maggetti to... Uh, uh, interview with Gio. I mean, yeah. I, it's not a joke. Well, and, uh, well thank you. <laughs> I'm very impressed with uh, having met so many people at Ground Zero. It's everything you mm -hmm. hear about. The only thing you don't hear about is of all the places there are to go, they're all within walking distance. They're all within four or five blocks of each other. Yeah, so they you are. Come, I mean, Ground Zero and TomTom, Tom, <laughs> you walk to the end of the street, take a left, you walk to the second store. It's it's like that close. Yeah. And um, you. You really can meet a lot of people. Like uh, this is an advantage that uh, a lot of other places don't have. If you do want to meet some other expats, because we all want to, you know, it's you have things in common that uh, you don't have in common with a, a Filipino to talk about sometimes, and yeah. uh, so it's nice to. Yeah, the guys here have yeah. been very, very helpful. Anytime I've been, it's like, oh, it's over there, it's over there, mm -hmm. whatever, wherever I need. Um, yep. And they all get along so well. Uh, yeah. They go down there. And a lot of them in the coffee shop. Uh, you know, I, at night I went down to some of the bars, and the the owner come up and introduced himself, and you know, what's your name? How you been? So oh. It's just a very very friendly place. Yeah. It's very friendly. Yeah, it is. Uh, no, you came here. You also uh, had uh, a treatment. Uh, you had surgery here. Yeah. Uh, for those concerned about my stocking cap and my long sleeve, I have a bald head, <laughs> and. I, you know, I, <laughs> I I grew up in the Midwest. I later moved to Florida, but you have a Paul Bunyan look. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, well, no. I've heard uh, <laughs> out here they call the locals call me um, oh, like Chuck like Norris. Chuck Norris, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> it, literally, my beard really just kind of hides some of my sagging face. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had the um, basal cell carcinoma cut off my back like last Friday. Okay. So the previous interview was before the surgery, now it's after the surgery. So mm -hmm. I still wear the long sleeve shirts sure. to protect myself. But we did that in San Diego. Did that in San Diego too. And it gets hotter right. there than it does here. But I worked outdoors as a contractor. I did pavers, I did turf, I was always outside. So we always protected our arms with long sleeves. Mm -hmm. So There we go. That's where the that's where the hat and the long sleeves come from. Don't worry about me, I, I'm doing <laughs> fine. I'm used to it. Well, uh, we'll end it with this. I know you started with uh, around 900 subscribers, I want to say, maybe a week I started, ago. Uh, I started with like... Uh, when we first started yeah, talking. Yeah, probably around 800. 800. And now how many do you have? About uh, 1,200. Wow. So that's that's good growth. And it continues to get views and you'll continue to get subscribers. Thanks, so, Gio. Well, Appreciate it. Really? Well, well, a good guess too. So also, I'm going to make a sizable, for me, a sizable donation to oh. his Italian trip. It's well, not too you. late to uh, make some contributions when you see this. To his honeymoon is going to America and to Italy. No, uh, just Italy. Italy, uh, America. What we're doing is we're we're getting some trips under her belt. So when she does apply for the tourist visa it'll be much easier to get approved because she's got a history of travel. Uh, Italy first, because she's she's got a love for Italy. I have a love for Italy, and we have family that I could stay with. So prob Italy for like a honeymoon, uh, we have to get approved on the visa and you know, save up a, a bit more money because it is a, a bit more of an expensive trip, but uh, Well, the, yeah. the deal I made, um, because I've been a while, uh, watched you for a long time and when mm -hmm. I got here I really didn't contribute because shortly after I got here I lost my card my visa card oh wow. so uh, which reminds me I got a new one now from BDO oh good I can explain that if you like 
Yeah, yeah. You, the same thing happened to me. And my card expired. I had it sent by FedEx. First, first was lost. And I ended up using Remitly. And even Remitly at some point locked me out of my account. They said it was suspicious activity of sending too much money. And uh, I finally got my card. But now I definitely have a couple of sources to be able to with get your money, which I highly recommend. Well, but bringing uh, two cards is, is definitely, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I got stuck with that because I did. Uh, anyway, I was saying is I didn't really have a chance to um, uh, donate much to buying coffee or mm -hmm. joining the channel or doing those kind of things. So this is my way of giving back. I knew I was going to get subscribers. Another way of my giving back. So if you if you subscribe to my channel and just send me a message, say friend of Geo's. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a donation on your behalf to Gio for his Italian trip. Well, thank you. And uh, it's that. already doing beyond my uh, beyond my imagination. But well, good deal. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Daryl, for coming back on the channel and getting a little more in depth about uh, you know cost of living and living out in the province. So, a couple of little things. Um, people mm -hmm. talk. They confused my budget in. Um, yes. In uh, Porak province with budget in Baguio as far as the food goes it's probably about the same mm -hmm. but what you're not going to do is you're not going to find a $72 a month or a $4,000 a month two bedroom apartment that's decent to live in with nice floors, walls, and ceiling in Baguio, in Baguio. Yeah, you it's wouldn't gonna, hear either <laughs> it's going to be closer to probably what it is here somewhere in the 20 20,000 minimum right right but uh, I wanted to yeah. clear that up so yeah, I uh, I do spend about equal time mm -hmm. because it was confusing me talking about Baguio and talking about Porak. I spent about half and a half time in each one. Okay, good to know. So and again, six hundred dollars are his basic expenses living in the barangay with his house paid for, no rent, and of course he spends more than that because he does go to Baguio and he travels. But that's his. Your you, basic you could look monthly ahead, expenses. Uh, you can look ahead on Facebook and you'll see um, expat insurance. Mm -hmm. I know uh, for uh, insurance is going to be something you're going to want to think about when you get here. Yep, yep, for uh, sure. Because you're not going to be doing this Social Security Part B, that type of thing. No. There's a link to travel medical down in the comments as well. And so. probably your, your expat insurance here is going to be a little bit less than uh, Part B. I would it's think so. I, I'm not sure. Not sure. I know you can pick up travel medical like fifty thousand worth of coverage, with like a hundred deductible for around fifty bucks a month. Yeah, and that's and that, far less than uh, yes. Uh, plan B Social Security. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks again, Daryl, and uh, we'll see you again. All right, my friend. All right. Thank you for having me. All right.